Uh, obviously, uh, congrats to Eddie and Clemson on a uh, phenomenal season. Um, they're a great team, uh, veteran leadership, um, a lot of players that accomplished a lot of things in their time at Clemson. Um, so congratulations, and obviously <laughs> three very difficult games against them uh, throughout the season, and tonight was no different. Um, really proud of our team, and, and you know, we, we, we said this going into the game, and, and we knew that uh, it was going to be a challenging game. And we knew there were going to be some tough moments. And we had to weather those moments and stay together and keep plugging away. And as we just told the team, um, goals change games. And you never know. And here is Caitlin Zappé um, getting the game winner, right? The goal that changed the game was seven minutes left in the half, right? It didn't end the game, but obviously um, it, it really put us in a good spot going into halftime. So, so happy. <laughs> So happy for Zip. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Oh, no. So, uh, yeah, that, that, that's all I got. Hap, ha, 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 happy to be um, happy to be advancing and happy to have an opportunity on Monday. Questions for the student athletes. Bert, Bert. Yeah, I think just finishing off the half, getting that last like 10 minutes, whatever time I have, I just want to like put my best effort for my team and whoever's next to me. And I think that really gave us momentum to go into the second half and definitely get the second goal and finish up the game. Christina, I, um, Tim gave us just that, you know, since 20, you guys are the first team since 2015 to not concede a goal in the College Cup um, so far. Yeah, not done. <laughs> <laughs> um, what has the defense done so well just, you know, to get here, to be at this point? Honestly, it's just communication, trusting each other. I know that Lauren has my back, Gil has my back, the whole four, I can name them out for you, obviously. But um, honestly, the whole team, it takes the whole team. It has to go through everyone to get to me. So I think just trusting them and them trusting me that I'll be there when I need to be. And um, I think just overall, I'm so proud of them because this game can be a hard game sometimes. It doesn't always go our way. And so for them to kind of keep it on our terms a little bit when maybe it wasn't going that way always, um, just super proud of them. We're growing every single game. Um, I'm just so proud of them and how we first started this season and here we are now. Uh, Caitlin, I know, correct me if I'm wrong, but mm -hmm. midway through the season you were kind of dealing with the injury a little yeah. bit. And you came back and you know, really started being picked up here and now you're know, scoring a goal on you know, one of the biggest stages. Yeah. Like, just what's this process been like for you? Throughout the season, you know, battling with injury, coming back, you yeah. know, senior season, you know, this moment now. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't do it without, like, my teammates. Like, they pushed me to be better every single day at practice, like, on the field. And I just want to put my, forth my best effort for them. And, yeah, there's injuries here and there, but I think just trusting the process and, like, focusing on the task at hand has helped me a lot in the future. We have a question from Zoom. You'll hear the voice. Uh, Melvin, go ahead. Uh, you want to ask your question? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations, guys. Um, my question is for the uh, marketing grad student, uh, Christina. Um, oh, I was just like, who is that? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> oh, I know that voice. Okay. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about when you knew that the um, defense was really gelling together. It's, you had so many clean sheets this season, and you had such a string of them now. When did you know that you guys are really going to be able to play your best for an extended period of time? Um, so, <laughs> I think maybe after the first game, obviously, it, there was a lot of improvement we needed to make. Um, <clears throat> We still started off very strong, but just kind of getting to know each other. We have some new faces within the team, so I think kind of having more time to play with each other and understanding each other's weaknesses and understanding each other's strengths, um, kind of um, dealing with that and building upon that every single week. So since 
we just trust each other and we love playing with each other. So every week is just a new week to build upon things. Wow. I'm just surprised you didn't ask you a marketing theory question. I appreciate <laughs> that. I appreciate that. <laughs> Kaylin, I saw after the game you went off and hugged your mom in the stands. What did she say to you? Um, that she's so proud of me and that I've been working hard for that moment and just to keep going. <laughs> so, Christina, uh, your distribution was excellent today and particularly on the goal kicks with friends and really high pressing. Was that something you guys discussed before the game or it just kind of opened up that way as the game developed? Um, well, thank you. Uh, I think it kind of is kind of what we saw. Uh, I always talk to Heather Gokress and Lauren Flynn next to me and see, maybe I see something, but they might see something that looks even bigger and looks like an even more open space. So we kind of just chat it up and sometimes it does get us in trouble timing wise, but I want to make sure that we're hitting it where we need to hit it and it's not going to get us in trouble. So I think kind of just trusting each other. If I roll it off to Lauren, she's going to hit it in a good spot. And if I just hit it um, one time, then it's in a good space so that we can go forward. It's not coming right back at us. Have time for a couple more. I'll be deep for both players. Um, you guys were here last year. Um, lost that post game. Um, how does it feel to be able to get back on the winning side and get to the cup? I jumped in there a couple times already, the championship, but how does it feel to be able to get back there again? Um, honestly, I'm just so proud of this team. Uh, we have, like I said, a lot of new faces, and to be able to just uh, come together as one and grow each week together and like I said, probably in the first press conference, it's a grind this part of the season because everyone's tired. It can become, it just becomes doing the little things, right? Um, so I think overall, we're just so proud of each other and trying to celebrate um, in this little moment now. But obviously, no, we need to move on and think about um, on Monday. Uh, second row. Uh, it's for you, Caitlin. I was out in the field chatting with Heather right after the game about her amazing assist to you, just over the head. Were you expecting it? Like, you got a first touch finish on it, so clearly you're ready. Um, talk us through that moment and what you were thinking. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I thought I was off sides, and then I kind of <laughs> looked <laughs> in front of me, and I was like, oh, maybe not. But it landed right in front of me, and then took a couple bounces, and then I was like, why not just take a rip? And ended up going in, so. Uh, i got time for a couple more. Uh, yeah. So Christina Kaylin, I mean, what a state of in the Phantom in the National Championship basically is like, is this regular now, is Tom Brady winning the Super Bowl. Um, what's, what's, the mental, what's the mental preparation going to be like knowing you guys have another game in a couple days and knowing whoever you face Stanford or BYU is going to be, is going to be even probably more difficult than tonight? You want it? Um, I mean, the preparation starts now, like Saturday, Sunday, eat, sleep practice some, but just mentally prepare our bodies for whoever we're playing, and just be us, and keep playing how we've been playing, and I think we should be fine. We have one more from Zoom. Melvin, go ahead. All right, thank you. Uh, Haven, you, it seemed like you scored right after you came onto the pitch, like within the first couple minutes. How tough is it to be so ready to um, play your best, because you, as reserve, you can't afford to uh, even to the game. You have to be ready right at the beginning. How tough is that for you? Um, I mean, what, my first goal is to just connect my first pass and just get dialed into the game and try to match everyone's energy. And it helps a lot that all my teammates are behind me and supporting me. So it makes it really easy to put my best foot forward to the game. All right. Well, thank you to the student athletes. You're all welcome to go ahead. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, questions for Coach in the back. Coach, Eddie said that it felt like to him in the first half that they were getting the better of you guys and it felt like they were playing the better half up until the goal. Did you feel that way? Yeah, I mean, I think they had a pretty good rhythm with the ball and um, created a couple of good looks, right? Um, and probably, I mean, for the game, possession was 54-46. Um, but I would guess that their possession might have been a little bit better than ours in that first half, right? They outshot us 8-5 to five in the first half. Um, yet at the same time, we had a couple, you know, the run Huff went on and the ball Beata played across to, um, <clears throat> to Dudley. So we still had a couple good looks, but 
there were a lot of moments in that first half where we were a little out, out of sorts defensively. We were kind of forcing things centrally and turning some balls over in bad spots. Right? And I don't know if that was just, you know, a little bit of nerviness, right? Um, but, uh, and that's where, again, you know, you go to, you go to zip, right? And uh, <clears throat> it's a big deal, right? Because you're right. They were probably feeling pretty good and probably feeling like, hey, we, we, we can win this game. And then all of a sudden, boom, in a half a second, they got to go into the locker room, down a goal, and find a way to get back in this game. And now our team is energized by that goal and feeling good and feeling a little bit more confident heading into the second half. So um, uh, I, I might have said this in my opening statement, but goals change games, and she changed the game. He also said that despite the fact that they played you three times and lost you guys three times, that he loves coaching against you, and it's a chess match. Did it feel like that was the first chess move that you had to make, putting Zip in the game and her scoring that goal? Yeah, you know, Zip is, uh, she scored a great goal against NC State um, on senior night, right, a special night, and beat a player off the dribble and just smashed it. I mean, the kid, she can hit a ball with absolutely both feet, right? And I told her that, um, this might be a bad thing to say, but I told her if I could, I would have bet $1,000 that she would have scored that goal, that chance that she had late in the game because she's just so good in and around goal, right? And so she, the goal she scored against NC State, I think she scored against BC a couple games before that. So she's getting you know some confidence. And I was so proud of that last moment when she did have that chance at the end of the game where she faced up and she beat a player, right, and, and, and got that shot off, right? And, and that just speaks to her confidence, right? There, there's another side of Zip that's very possession-oriented and maybe cuts out of that and goes backwards. So it's all about having courage and willing to take risks. And like she said, the ball bounced a couple times on her goal, and she just decided to have a rip, and I'm glad she did. Second, second row. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be a miss to not mention the game that's going on right now. What game? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, we all saw what happened last Friday night, right? One week ago um, at BYU, right? Three nothing, and and all of a sudden it's four three. So, a lot of time left to be played, right? Uh, Eighty minutes, seventy nine minutes still to be played, right? And BYU um, has a, a real prolific attack. Um, yet at the same time, their challenge is, is steep because I think Stanford's given up just 10 goals all season, right? And now to win the game, they've got to, at least to tie the game and win on penalties, they've got to score 20% of that total number for the season. So both teams are phenomenal. No matter who wins this game, we're going to have a tall task on Monday night. So, um, you know, we've got to bounce back. Like these guys said, it'll be about rest and recovery and preparation. Uh, but either way, um, it's going to be a great team on Monday. Coach, uh, I... I feel like I have to go back to this. The yellow card you got in the 30th minute, yeah. uh, that was that was uh, about that's, that was about six minutes before uh, Caitlin scored the goal. Um, do you feel like that a single handling might have lit the fire under your team that ended up getting the goal at the end of the half? No, I, I mean I, I could try and take some credit for that, but that would be <laughs> grossly ignorant um, or arrogant. Um, I, uh, and actually, I asked her at halftime why I got the yellow. And um, I said, all I was asking is for you to take a look, because I felt that their player took our player down, chopped at her from behind. And I guess I got the yellow, because any time you are out of your technical area and do this, it's an automatic yellow. So I got that. And I apologized to our team at halftime. I said, look, we got we to gotta stay cool. I apologize for the yellow. We just got to keep playing. Um, you know, talking about you know, the defensive stat against you, I know you beat your back on a lot of credit. You know, you mentioned that a little bit of an with the chip on the shoulder as well as recognition, stuff like that. At the same time, the stat line of just not being scored on throughout the entire tournament. You know, how impressive is just that bad for the defensive state that they put out there? Uh, it's, it's a big deal. Um, you know, I didn't know the 2015 stat, right? Um, but I did know that we were the only team within this group that hadn't conceded so far in the tournament. And then, um, you know, I, I, I haven't said this, te this stat in front of our team, but that's now 14 games. In the last 14 games, we've only given up one goal in the run of play. Um, that's, that's an impressive stat right there. Um, gave up a PK, gave up a corner kick, gave up a free kick. 
So four goals against in the last 14 games. I, I, I think our, our back line and goalkeeping um, deserves a little bit of recognition. Speaking of the back line, uh, Mimi Van Zandt doesn't show up in the Animal. sheet, but it felt like the goal Animal. that Dudley scored was because she put clamps on a second-team All-American on the other end. 100%. And, and that's not the first time that she, her defending has ignited our attacking. You know, she is – you just never know what you're going to get out of freshmen. Right, you know if they're that they're good players, right? But how, wh what's the acclimation process? What's the confidence process? How do they deal with bad days, right? All of the above, and uh, unfortunately, obviously, one of our outside backs, you know, tore her ACL eight minutes into our season, and Mimi stepped on. That was against A and M. She played 80, 80 minutes against A and M, eighty minutes against TCU. We, we knew right then that weekend that we had a player, and she just gets absolutely better and better every game, both her defending and her attacking. She's she's going to have a bright future. Time for a couple more. Um, you know, we talked about Jordan, and you know when she's on the field and stuff like that, you talked about the way she's defended sometimes, you know, reference to the A&M game a little bit too. When she's defended aggressively like that, but she ends up finding the back of you, and you know, what's I guess what's her tenacity and mentality like just in those moments to just finish it? Yeah, I mean, any good attacking player, and especially a central nine, you want them to be a menace, you know, an absolute menace. Yeah, you know, they're going to get defended well at times. They're going to get pushed, shoved. It's going to be physical. But those who keep coming back are the ones who can, can mentally and physically wear on defending oppositions, right? And, and we like to, you know, you, you can play this game a lot of different ways. And we like to wear back lines down, back half of teams down, right, with our atta relentless attacking. And Jordan Dudley, with her technique and her brain and her pace and her physicality, is, actually, is the absolute epitome of, of that wearing down of an opponent. So obviously you guys won today. Um, probably watch football tomorrow, then Monday you get back for the game. Now, how do you guys get prepared for such a quick turnaround in the game? I had experience two weeks ago, but how do you, you know, just get ready for it? The biggest game of the season on such a short rest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 we'll stay in our rhythm, right, which is uh, tomorrow morning we'll watch a video on, on tonight's game and um, see where, you know, we, we were good and um, try and build upon those good moments. And then um, probably, probably not till uh, Sunday um, will we be prepared to start showing, you know, our team clips of tonight's winner. Um, may, maybe we can give them some little drips tomorrow night before dinner. Um, and then we'll train on, on Sunday and uh, start to do some walkthroughs and stuff. We're not, we're not going to do a whole lot of training between now and kickoff on Monday night. But uh, um, as soon as we can, start talking about our opponent. Last one. Coach, um, what's it like being around this team? Have you just having this just having this special group around you? What gives you the most confidence going into Monday's National Championship match? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, to, to win and to win at a high level, um, you need obviously a lot of talent, and we have that. Um, you know, in all parts of the field, and we have that. Um, you need great leadership, and and we have that. And, and every college team, they, their 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 fall begins in January, right? Ours began in January, and we had some tough times in January, in February, and March. We didn't win a spring game until April 22nd. Right? And that was really hard. And there were times where we dealt with those struggles really well, and there were times where we didn't. We were, we were emotional, and we lost our, our tempers, and we came undone. And we talked a lot about uh, this season will be defined by how we deal with tough moments. And our team has been um, unbelievable in all those moments. And so, um, so I think our, our poise gives me confidence. Um, like I said, our leadership, right? our confidence, and then probably what has built over the season is our team's belief that they could be good. And I know that might sound crazy because it's Florida State and, you know, in the final all the time and all this and that. Well, every team is – every year is a new year and it's a new group of leaders and they're very humble and at the same time their standard is very high. And so it wasn't until I think that Notre Dame game where we beat them 4-1 to at home that our team really started to believe – Okay, you know what? We're actually pretty good, and we can we can we can be good. So the talent, the determination, and then the leadership, and then the final piece of the belief. Well, coach, 
Coach, thank you. Uh, congratulations. We'll see you on Monday night. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Coach.